those are the only ways I can think of to say that right now. <laughs> but it might change. Um, position. Position is kind of the same problem as simple motion. And again, um, we've got Nizain Mazere, she became somebody standing, and then I put a, a locket in there, Sumiyamura, on the bed. Um, and you can use it with la also, la zain mazere. Um, the la would then have a more habitual implication. Um, actions. She danced a dance. Uh, Tama yayara. Uh, basically, she was the source of, or the expressor of the dance. Uh, Ni zain mayara. She is dancing. She became a dancing person. La zain mayara. She is a dancing person. Would again be more habitual. Maybe she does that for a living. Um, what he calls action processes, killing somebody. Um, yama zain mayara. Uh, um, he became a killed person, and it was Kiki's fault. <laughs> so that's how that works again. That's a change of state. Uh, creation. That's definitely a change in state from non-existent to existence. So, or nyama yachela. She made the role. Or is just a past marker saying that the action is completed. <laughs> Uh, cognition, these usually use say. Um, say lay, so I experienced um, yada yada, yada a thought. Um, Yen renames, oh, I forgot to mention that. Yen renames the primary object of say. Um, the primary object of say doesn't even have to exist for Yen to rename it, okay? La yaduna suya teva. So I think that the book is on the table. To me, there is this thought, and that thought is that the book is on the table. Sensation. Tema mosaranya, yen na yadunya musuya tema. So to me, to my eyes, or to her, to her eyes, um, that the book is on the table. Um, that's actually how you do anything that really involves um, seeing, hearing, feeling, thinking. It's generally with, uh, with say, uh, the person in the goal position, and then you can elaborate with which body part it was sensed with. Um, emotion, you can pretty much use any relational to do emotion. Um, and they all kind of mean slightly different things, sort of, kind of. Again, this is probably unstable and will change. Uh, so, Sena Yame Do Yaguna Yadema, he uh, experienced a piece of happiness um, from the book that he got. Or, Nizai Mame, he became a happy person because of the book that he got. Laizain uh, Mame, he is happy, probably a more general statement about his personality. And Pazain Aname, he has some happiness, and that would probably not be more, that would probably not be permanent. The La implies something that's usual, Pa is not necessarily usual. Um, utterances. This is again kind of idiomatic. These are say and then yen with nothing in between. Satena yen, Gaya Luna Sugatera. She told me the book is on the table. Transactions. This is what I originally envisioned say to be, and then got extended to everything else. So Tenla Yaduna, she gave me the book. And the Tenla is say in the past tense, first person singular. Uh, source, um, wait, I wrote that wrong. Third person singular source, first person singular goal. It's actually correct in the Kalinian and incorrect in the, in the transcription. <laughs> um, manipulation. Um, since me kind of implies uh, agents and, and causation, you can use me to, to do things like they made her dance, Nyata Zain Magyar. Uh, they made it that she becomes a dancing person. Um, but um, say would imply giving, so giving permission would you say. Um, so tetme yasarai yen nizai mayar. So that's pretty much everything that's in his book. And I can mostly solve um, the, these problems when I come up with a relay um, by, as, as you can see, taking the semantic part and turning it into uh, attribute of, of uh, one of the nouns in the sentence, and um, trying to figure out which relational would fit best. So, 
if you have questions, just let me know. Figure out how to translate it on the fly. <laughs> So I have a question to sure. start. Sure. Why? Okay. Why? Why? Because. Um, <laughs> why? Why wordlessness? Um. I, it seems that you um, primarily appro approach language as an art language, more or less, typically. Yes. Or yes. You have this odd, quasi interlang. I know. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, because um, this, this decision was made 15 years ago. I don't even really remember what I was thinking that <laughs> <laughs> But then, you know, it's kind of interesting, and so I keep wanting to, to play with it and see how far I can go with it, and, and yet still maintain a complete, a, as naturalistic a language as I can, but change this one parameter and, and see what happens. Good enough. Okay, sure. Oh, Sylvia, um, I'm just wondering, you know, um, is it possible, uh, since you have these um, these initial forms, love and pa, mm -hmm. and, and these seem to be changing with, ten with the tenses, um, and then you're attaching pronouns to them, they almost look like auxiliary verbs. You could probably argue that. I wouldn't necessarily argue against you. Uh, there are only four of them. Well, well, like, you know, but if you think of them as auxiliary verbs with tenses, it's like having have and will and and is in English three or four verbs and in, infinitives in okay. give you all our verbs in English for the most part. Okay. Well, I'm not trying to be a hard guy, but... No, but that's all right. <laughs> somebody then, could just, you know, mistake But then the nouns, the, 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 the semantic part, they still all inflect as, as the same way, the exact same way as nouns. Um, there's singular, they have singular and plural, they have inanimate and animate, and that, you know, I mean, here. That, that would be in the, um... Um, see, there's a, Yaduna there at the end is a, it's just a singular inanimate noun. Um, Yame is a singular inanimate noun, Malne is an animate noun, so it would apply to a person. No, I, I can I can appreciate that all the other ones are, are nouns, um, uh -huh. but I, I, but when it comes to the swim part, I mean that could be seen as a type of infinitive, so um, which is has is a is kind of a noun, so I'm just um, could be I guess, um, but I think it's interesting. If one person comes in with no nouns, and the other one comes yeah, in with no verbs. <laughs> Um, I won't really argue with you. Um, this is not, I mean, the, the, the word there, maharme and, and yaharme, they both <coughs> they function as nouns. Um, they have more adjectival meaning, which is why I don't really, well, I try not to call them all nouns. I call them substances, if I can remember. Um, but, um, and, and me does not inflect for tense, it only inflects for persons. It inflects for tense and person. Pa does not inflect at all, ever, whatsoever. Um, La will sometimes inflect for tense, and that's it. But it won't inflect for a person. So, no, but I do appreciate, you know, th you know this is very yeah, interesting. Yeah, you could call it a closed class of four verbs. I mean, you could call it that. Yeah, and, and you can't add to it. Yeah, but your infinitives are a whole lot more like nouns. Yeah, that's... certainly. Okay. Oh, didn't 
say, wait, where is it? Yeah. Association, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, la, ma, la, re, and la. Okay, um, that would be, um, somebody who's associated with somebody else who swoops. So, you could oh, just I say that. Oh, so this is not swimming, it's a swimmer? Yeah, it would oh. be more like a swimmer. Okay, how, yeah. would, how would I just make that swimming? I don't think you would. That's a very that's a very You could probably say unharme, un you could probably say unharme, which would be the concept of swimming. Okay, could probably do that, and that would use ma, the, the, the MMA, um, Akame ma, so her idea of the concept of swimming, maybe. Uh, her swimming existed, and yeah. then you might she had this throw word. on an advert that says a time or a place or both. Well, maybe, except that really implies more of the idea of swimming and not the action of swimming. So she has this weird idea of swimming, and she does it this weird way that nobody else would call swimming. <laughs> a creative swimming theory. Yes. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, does anyone else have a question? No. So um, I was. I have both a comment and a question. Oh, okay. The comment is that I was sort of struck by how. Um, similar Kellen is uh, to, in some respects, to the language that David presented yesterday. Uh -huh. Again, this seems like another sort of Tagalog-esque language where everything is sort of done via, uh, or at least all the main verbs are mm -hmm. sort of expressed through some sort of nominalization, or seems right. to be. Uh, very nominalized, at least on sort of language internal evidence. And to follow up on uh, George's comment, there are, I think, some uh, uh, some Australian Aboriginal languages, uh, probably not in the area of cardio, but uh, that have a very small set of verbs, and then uh, they do actually get all the content from some other class. I'm not sure what the accepted it, analysis is. It's on my list of things to do, you know, like eat right and exercise more and study some of those languages. <laughs> <That's what laughs> yes. So um, my question was, seeing that uh, you have a couple of instances of broken on the, uh, uh -huh. the collection of states, I'm curious if Kellen has uh, what some uh, linguists call a uh, causative and coative alternation. What you have here is actually, I believe, the, um, the especially in the one that starts with ni, the encoded uh, uh, version, where uh, something just happens yeah. to a single object. How would you say that, like, uh, what was that name? Um, uh, Keithier broke the bowl. Well, you could say Nyama Yachala Yuhua Akiya. So you just, you just tack it on. And tack it on, yep. Oh. And you could even just tack it on with to, Nyi Yachala Yuhua To Kiya, to imply that he didn't do it deliberately. Hmm? Okay, it was an accident. He just brushed by the table, the bowl fell off and broke. Okay. <laughs> Other um, questions? John Q, I think you had a question. Um, hi, Sylvia. Um, hi. I was interested in um, some of your examples regarding the dancing person, and uh, it made me realize that uh, a word like dancing. I'm interested in the semantics of the bare root because dancing is a word that manifests itself. If you can argue that it manifests itself natively as a verbal idea, but then you have things like a dance, yeah. which is an, essentially an instance of dance. 
dancing. And then you have dance as like a, a type of dance, you know, a, right. a, 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 twi a twist or whatever. Right. So I'm wondering what the semantics of the bare root are that then get um, inflected into what sorts of derivations. Yeah. Especially when the main basic idea semantically is a is a verbal one rather than a, an object. Well, um, I know with the with the, the first sentence with the se, the yara is really more of a dance like with the twist or something or, or an instance of dancing where she did something specific and had a beginning and an end and she did it. Um, um, and with me. Yeah, I'm not sure how I would tease all that apart. I really don't know. Um, I guess I guess my question more fundamentally comes down to, to do you feel a sense of artificiality about about the root being called a noun when it, when the idea that it expresses is one that semantically speaking involves action you know, move bodily movement and, and not any kind of a tangible yeah. object. I think part of the reason it can still be a noun is it's bounded. It's got a beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. You can say when she started and when she stopped. So it's there's like an another word, object. Yeah, there's another word that might be a better example, uh, which is rock, uh, which is a step. So she took a step, could be <coughs> substituted in there, and with all the same inflections, actually. Um, so, so Tama Yaraga, she she basically took a step. Um, probably would work better with se than with ye, because a step is such a short thing. Um, but uh, but you could put that in there too. So yeah, some of those some of those questions I go back and forth on, and I wonder would they really say it this way? Would it be completely different? I don't know. Also, if, uh, I can ask a second question. I'm sure. interested in how you express um, motion in situ, you know, like moving my arm as opposed to moving the pencil from one from point A to point B. That would probably be similar to position, mm -hmm. but I don't really. I, I've never really had to translate that in a relay, so I've never. <laughs> 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 well, I would answer for me by five p.m. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? Um, in that case, oh, Jeff, please. Uh, it's more of a comment. Um, I was thinking, you know, all the while you were talking about how historically a system like this might evolve, and it occurred to me that uh, there, there's one theory um, concerning, you know, the kind of languages that you know I do and that I study, where it's very verb heavy. The idea is that. Once upon a time, there were uh, a number of you know, separate words for certain things, like you would have a basic verb root and stuff like directionals and um, adverbials and any kind of supplementary material that you would incorporate into the verb. They were originally separate words, but over time, um, for whatever reason, speakers just started throwing them all onto one class of uh, words, and in this case, like with Mohawk, it would of course be the verbs. Here, you have a system where they just did the opposite and started throwing on the nouns, and you would wind up with something like that. It would be interesting to go back historically and look at what uh, these inflections meant originally before they were thrown onto the noun and became, you know, to express what they express now. Relational, I really know the history of this pop <laughs> because it is um, it is pretty recent. Um, actually, the only reason Kellen really has four relationals is because I got tired of doing everything in threes, um, and so <laughs> I decided Kellen does everything in fours. So I've had to have four relationals. It's the same reason why I have four moons around the planet. Um, <laughs> but um, any positions, like I said, can be rewritten as law. So let me find. Uh, There. So, so pa sign aname. You can rewrite that as la sign pa aname, um, and, and basically um, that 
construction is considered an older construction. Um, there are other words that actually can fit in between nouns like that. They haven't yet become relationals. They might in the future if I decide to expand the class. Nye is one. Nye is like like or as or same as. Um, but I haven't done that yet. So right now I'm sticking with these four and seeing how far I can go with them. Okay. Um, I'm glad I could manage to convince you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.